Hi guys, this is Clara Hudson of While They Play Designs, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do Judy's Magic Cast On. So if you take a look here, I have a sock, and it's worked from the toe up to the cuff. And if you look at the toe here, you can see that our cast on happens right at the lower seam of the cuff, of, of the uh, toe. And as you can see, that is completely seamless. You cannot see where our cast on happened. So I'm gonna show you that technique today. First, we're gonna start out with circular needles in the size that we're working our sock. And for working Judy's Magic Cast On, you general, generally want to work it in magic loop, which means you're going to be using a circular. And I do suggest using uh, 32 inches or longer for magic loop. But for this video, I'm just using a 24 inch. And we're going to use the same yarn that we are using to cast on for our sock, that we're working our sock in. And to begin Judy's Magic Cast On, it is similar to a long tail cast on in that you're going to have some waist yarn that you're working with, or a tail of yarn. And you want that tail to be at the bottom of your work or to the right. And for this video, we're gonna be casting on 16 stitches for our toe. So we will have eight stitches on one side of the circular needle and eight stitches on the other side. So in order to do that, just giving myself a little bit of some tail here. And I'm actually just going to place my yarn over the bottom needle, just like so. And I'm gonna anchor that strand of yarn with my thumb and the top of my work or the left of my work will be coming from my ball of yarn. And the motions for Judy's Magic Cast On are sort of similar to a long tail. And I'm gonna be holding my yarn in a similar way as the, as the long tail cast on. I'm going to split my two strands of yarn with my index finger and my thumb. And then I'm gonna grab both strands and tension them with my index finger holding the a uh, strand of yarn that's coming from the ball of yarn and then the bottom strand of my tail. And I do have that strand of yarn anchored on the bottom needle. So that is actually going to be my first cast on stitch. Now I'm going to place a stitch on my top needle by rotating downwards and I'm gonna actually hook that bottom strand over the top and around that top needle. And that's actually the first cast on of my back needle or my top needle. Now I'm gonna anchor those with my thumb so they don't go anywhere. Now I'm ready to load up another stitch on my bottom needle. And I'm gonna be doing that with the top strand of yarn. So I'm gonna come from behind over the top and scoop. Just like so. And I've cast it on the bottom needle one more stitch. Now I'm ready to cast on another stitch on the top needle. So I'm gonna be doing that with the bottom strand. So I'm gonna swoop down just like I did before and I'm gonna go over the top of that strand and underneath. So as you can see, the strand always goes from the front over the top, whether it's the bottom needle or the top needle. And if you lose your place in this, you can see the strand that I just placed was on the top needle. So now I'm ready to load up the bottom needle. And I'll do that with the top strand. So I'll go from behind over the top and swoop up. So there's my third stitch. Now I'm ready to load my third stitch onto my bottom needle. So I'm gonna do that with the bottom thread. So you'll go over the top and swoop it up. So now we have three stitches on each needle. So we're ready to load the bottom with our top strand. So come from behind and scoop it up, just like so. And we'll anchor that, and then we'll load up our top needle with our bottom strand. So go over the top and swoop up. So there's four on each needle. So again, bottom needle gets the top strand. Oop. Let's try that again. <laughs> bottom needle gets the top strand. So just like so. Now the top needle gets the bottom strand, like so. 
And as you get used to this, you can go a little faster, like so. But you just want to remember to cinch up your stitches that you've cast on to your needles. So we have two, four, six on the top, two, four, six on the bottom. So we need one more, uh, two more on the top and two more on the bottom. And we've just done our top needle, so now we're ready to do the bottom. So we'll swoop that up from the top strand, and then the top needle will catch the bottom strand. And we need one more stitch per needle. Okay. So now if we count, we have two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight on each needle. Now, this is the tricky part. You wanna drop your working yarn and make sure that you are keeping these stitches anchored so they don't go anywhere. Now you're going to rotate your needles to the right and you wanna make sure that this tail does not go anywhere. So we're just gonna pull it to the bottom of our work. And this is our working yarn coming from our ball of yarn. So if you take a look here, you can see this stitch is now anchored with our tail. That's not gonna be going anywhere. And now for magic loop, you're just gonna unload that bottom needle, pull it out so you can work with it, and then load up your top needle with your stitches that you're going to work. And now we are ready to work our first round of our toe. So I'm just simply gonna knit these stitches so you can see how we work them. The way I had you cast on for Judy's Magic Cast On already puts these stitches into their correct orientation on our needles. And if you take a look here, that was our first stitch that we just laid over our needle and secured with our thumb. So it's not really a stitch, it's just a strand of yarn. So instead of knitting into the back loop, we wanna knit into the front loop just as normal so that stitch is actually secured and doesn't go anywhere. You can see right there, we've actually created a knit stitch there. So that will not go anywhere. Now we want to turn and load up that empty needle with our stitches and then pull out the bottom needle so we can knit onto, the, onto this circular. Okay, now we're just gonna cinch up our working yarn and we are ready to knit the stitches on the second needle and we can just knit them normal through the front loop because they're already in the correct position. And then when we get to the last stitch on that second needle, I wanna show you it's actually attached to our tail. It's that one that I showed you at the beginning of our work that had a pearl bump on the back. So that's gonna be a very loose stitch. So you will work that normal through the front loop, but it's gonna be very loose. I'll show you here. You can see how just how loose that stitch is. But you don't need to worry about it. You just need to grab that tail and pull. So this is what's going to anchor the rest of the stitches. So you don't want that stitch to come loose. This can just be woven into your sock until it disappears. You don't really have to worry about that. You can secure it with a knot if you wish, but by the time you weave it in, you can, if you're using 100% uh, wool that's not super wash, you can even felt it in the end so it doesn't go anywhere. But as you can see, we've finished the Judy's Magic cast on, and if you look, it is impossible to see where that cast on occurred. So I worked a couple more rows with an increase in between. And as you can see, it's starting to increase out to the left and the right on both sides. But as you can tell, instead of a flat piece, we now have a round piece. You can see the side seams there of our work. And I'll go ahead and show you on this piece that I started. You can see where our cast on was here at the bottom of the toe. And then we worked our increase on the front needle, right and left, and then the back needle. And that actually creates the sock itself. 
and then you would just continue around in rounds working the rest of the foot of your sock. But that's how we do Judy's Magic Cast On. I hope this technique helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.